uh, I think you know writing about tragedy uh, can be a really tricky business and uh, this next book that I have to talk about is an illustration of how that's the case this is a book you might have heard of before it's called The Painted Bird by Jerzy Kaczynski um, even when a literary voice does come across as authentic and the writing the writing seems sometimes uh, more interested in using its characters as allegories and as historical foils instead of respecting their individuality of experience. And this always strikes me as untrue uh, to the spirit of writing about history in the first place, even if it is in the form of fiction, and especially uh, something as historically close to us and as horrifying as the Holocaust was. That's the major problem I had with, with this novel, and I think that Kaczynski might be one of the most egregious offenders in the small selection of Holocaust literature that I'm familiar with. The content of the novel is, as you might expect of any Holocaust novel, uh, really tough to deal with. It's, it has relentless violence and uh, frequent incidents of rape and bestiality and physical abuse of a 10-year-old child who narrates the book. Uh, soon after being separated from his parents, the narrator is shuttled from village to, from village, to village and peasant to peasant to be looked after, nearly all of them suspicious of his gypsy dark features. He has dark hair and dark eyes you really feel that the narrator is this uh, disenfranchised bastard of history. Um, almost all of these would-be caretakers that come upon him and that uh, these peasants, these villagers that encounter him are physically brutal, uh, superstitious, and backward. To read this book and to know that there were children who lived through and experienced things that were very much parallel to what's written in the book. One might think that it was impossible to live through this without deep, permanent psychological scars. And apparently there is some, a bit of controversy about how autobiographical this is. Uh, some people seem to think it is, some people think it isn't. Um, some people even think that Jerzy Kaczynski uh, plagiarized this book, uh, that he wasn't fluent enough in English. Uh, Kaczynski's Polish, uh, that he wasn't fluent enough in English at the time when he supposedly wrote it. So it's even up for grabs as to whether he did write it. And apparently some, uh, some pretty authoritative people uh, didn't think that he did. I don't know enough to say one way or the other. Uh, the unyielding violence, though, in the book doesn't allow for a single moment of of reflection on the part of either the young boy who narrates it or the reader. You always have to be on your feet and anticipating the next rape or the next beating that occurs. And, and while the violence never became anesthetizing as it has in similar novels, I couldn't help but feeling that the narrator was just a cipher for Jerzy Kaczynski's philosophy of history, which you could sum up something like this. We're thrust into this cruel world, helpless and naked, only to be teased and kicked and humiliated, and then you die. It's a, a pretty bleak view of history. Uh, he has no problem letting you know that God won't be there to help you, and that political parties, uh, specifically for him, the one that most interests him is the Communist Party, they're just, in cruel, just as cruel and manipulative as history itself. Considering the course of 20th century history, there are many good reasons for coming to such conclusions. In a piece of fiction, though, a reader needs room to breathe and space in which the characters can have thoughtful self-reflection. The narrator is denied all of that here, simply because he's trying to make it to the next day just to live another day. There is the occasional book that fails not because of its message, 
but because of the way in which the writer tries to communicate that message. And I think this is a prime example of that. There are important ideas about human nature and how, how inhumane that human nature can so often be, but using a character as both a figurative and literal whipping boy for history can never succeed as a novel. It just doesn't ring true for me. Um, you know, did definitely go out and and read this book. It's um, it might not come with my highest recommendation, but it has come with the highest recommendation of many people who are much more well versed in Holocaust literature than I ever will be, and they seem to be really impressed by it. Um, it. I mean, if you read many reviews, many people are turned off by the violence. The violence was, I guess, off-putting, but it wasn't what made me dislike the novel so much. It was that Kaczynski used this young boy to basically paint a lesson about history and about history works, about how history works and how people treat one another. And it just felt um, a little bit dishonest to use one boy as, like I said, a cipher to try to communicate all of that information. It felt like it would have been much better written as a, a, a book of history or a book of the philosophy of history. But um, if you're interested, it's very short, very interesting read. Uh, the Painted Bird by Jerzy Kaczynski.